This week, California made history. On Wednesday, Governor Gavin Newsom signed a first-of-its-kind law forming a task force to study the state's role in slavery and make recommendations for reparations. California joined the union as a free state in 1850, but still had a history of slavery until the 13th Amendment in 1865. The bill's author, California Assemblywoman Shirley Weber, joins us now. Thank you so much for your time, Assemblywoman. Thank you for the invitation. So you hope that this bill will inspire national action. How long have you been fighting for this? And, and walk us through what you hope will happen next. Well, I think what is uh, what we've been fighting for, is, as you probably looked at the records, it's been 30 or 40 years in which every year someone from the Congressional Black Caucus introduced a reparations bill, and it's never gotten very far. And so we wanted to basically call for a commission that would begin the study of reparations in California. The, the bill calls for the establishment of a, a commission of nine individuals. Uh, the governor will appoint five, and the president pro tem and the, and the speaker will appoint two and each. And so we will have nine persons who will be from their various backgrounds and academic backgrounds as well, who will be looking into the impact of California's uh, sla slavery in California uh, and, uh, and its impact today, not only what took place then, but also more importantly, what impact it continues to have on California on the economic and educational life of African Americans in the state of California. So many might remember that in July, Asheville, North Carolina approved a reparations resolution. Now, instead of direct cash, the city plans to make investments in areas where black residents face disparities. Is that something that you would consider an option for California, or is the bottom line that you're hoping that this law will spur the state of California to directly pay descendants of slaves? Well, you know, I, th I don't know if there could be a, a direct payment to the descendants of slaves with regards to the number of years that have been passed, but that is surely something that people can consider. We have not taken any option off the table uh, because we don't want a, a fast response to it to say, okay, we'll give everybody $30,000 and then we're done uh, without actually realizing that the problem may be much deeper than that. Uh, we want to basically do a complete and, and clear assessment of the damage done and come up with solutions that would have an impact act on people's lives and that would change their lives uh, and, the, and their children's lives so that we can actually try to level the playing field. So it, I doubt if it'll be a quick fix, like a couple thousand dollars, uh, but we hope that it will be a comprehensive study that will make some really good and deep recommendations about how we change California. And what's your response to critics of, of this bill who say that the national government, not states, should be responsible for reparations? Uh, they're absolutely correct. The state, federal government should be responsible and should be, but it's not. And oftentimes, California leads the way. I mean, we've often wavered for a number of things, whether it's dealing with issues of law enforcement and federal policies, uh, and, and they have not come. Uh, we realize in California, we can probably do things a little faster. And we believe that given the size of California, we're not just some little itty bitty state. We're the fifth largest economy in the world. And so we've waited long enough for the federal government that is so, in many ways, very difficult, as we know, um, to bring the kind of change that's necessary. And so California plans to lead the way in this and and not be in the back seat but hopefully in the driver's seat uh, to help uh, others to see that what is possible as a result of, of California's efforts. Uh, of course, as you would know, there was an original promise of 40 acres and a mule. Why do you think that national movements to make amends for slavery have repeatedly failed over the years? And does this year's so-called racial reckoning our country is going through give you hope that now is the right time for this conversation and beyond the talking for the doing? Well, we hope so. Uh, we hope that those who are uh, serious about it stay focused on it and that um, and that they recognize the what has been done. You know, the, the 40 acres and a mule, someone says it, it, if you basically added it up and, and multiplied and figured out over the years, would be a huge settlement for, uh, for African Americans or anyone. Uh, and we didn't get it, but it was interesting that they recognized the fact that simply freeing from slavery did not necessarily give them an equal footing or, an or even an opportunity to get on an equal footing because they didn't own land and they didn't even if they had land they didn't have a way of working that land you know there are those who still believe that that they don't owe us anything that we have had equal opportunity that we can basically uh, move forward and make a difference and it's interesting because no other group has that has been misused by the United States has ever been treated in that manner. And so that too is a part of the legacy of, of asking ourselves the question, why is it that we've never felt 
that we needed to do something in terms of reparations for African Americans who suffered the worst kind of discrimination in this country. And we've never felt a sense of obligation at the federal level that we needed to atone for the sins of our, of our fathers and even of ourselves. And um, and so that in itself addresses the, the issue and, and, and it feeds into what is happening in the streets right now. People ask the question, how could somebody do this to George Floyd like that for almost nine minutes? You have to look at the history of this country and its relationship to African Americans and how it has never really taken full responsibility for slavery, never believed that it was a, a, a horrible thing that we did, and even after it's over, never realized that their fathers and their forefathers benefited from slavery and to this day still own the land and the resources that they amassed from slavery. Uh, so it, it is a, hopefully this will be an educational piece as well for the public to understand of the just how deep and powerful the institution of slavery was in this country and how it still affects people today in terms of their privilege or lack of privilege in the society. Assemblywoman Shirley Weber, we thank you for the history lesson, for the education and for your time tonight. Well, thank you. We look forward to the results and sharing that result, the results with the world, so people can really understand the impact of slavery on the lives of African Americans. And I'm excited about that. We'll stay tuned. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good evening. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.